Hey yo, welcome back to Cartoon Mania. Today we'll be covering the beloved series Powerpuff Girls from beginning to end in detail. It has a total of 6 seasons starting in 1998 and ending in 2005 with a total of 78 episodes. So without further ado, let's begin. Now we all know that Professor Utonium is the brilliant scientist who created the girls. We also know that Mojo Jojo is the go-to antagonist of the show. But did you guys know that these two are actually related? This is shown in Mr. Jojo's Rising, where we learn that Mojo Jojo was once just Jojo, a cute little chimpanzee whom the professor adopted as his pet and lab assistant. Before the girls were born, the professor loved Jojo as his own child, but that was about to change. In the Powerpuff Girls movie, Townsville is having quite a time dealing with a bunch of colorful characters who are keeping things interesting with their villainous antics. Meanwhile, our good old Professor Utonium heads back to his cozy home and decides to whip up a perfect child using sugar, spice, and everything nice in his kitchen. Little did he know, this playful experiment was about to turn into his most famous and delightfully unpredictable creation of all time. His experiment takes an unexpected turn when his mischievous chimpanzee companion, Jojo, decides to play a prank on the professor. In a comical twist of fate, Jojo gives the professor a spectacular explosion. Luckily, the professor manages to create some distance between himself and the chemical reaction, but poor Jojo, in his less than brilliant moment, lingers a bit too close for comfort, getting the full force of the explosion and being propelled right out of the window, much in a slapstick fashion. After the uproarious explosion, Professor Utonium regains consciousness to discover three tiny, adorable girls before him, introducing themselves as his incredible creations. Overjoyed, Utonium names them Blossom for her politeness, Bubbles for her infectious giggles, and Buttercup, simply because it starts with a B. Buttercup, because... It also begins with a B. He soon realizes they possess amazing superpowers, like Blossom's lightning-fast reflexes, which save him from a stair tumble while shopping for their first presents, caught by Bubbles and Buttercup. The following day is a whirlwind of joyful activities as they help him paint walls, inadvertently transforming him into a work of art, move furniture, and install windows in their room. They cap it off with a happy lunch, sharing laughs and creating cherished moments before bedtime. Meanwhile, Jojo suffers from the effect of the explosion, which causes his brain to grow large. Not only that, but he turns green and becomes extremely smart in the process. The problem is that the professor now diverts all his attention toward the girls, which makes him jealous. The once loved chimpanzee was not neglected because of the girls, so he puts on a costume, names himself Mojo Jojo, and vows to use his newfound intelligence to eliminate the girls, so he can receive the same love he received from the professor before the girls were born. If we go to the episode Get Back Jojo, we are taken to the year 1959 when the professor was just a kid. However, instead of being the genius that he is now, he was a troublesome kid who had no interest in science. He would continuously interrupt lectures and cause trouble in the class. But then, what led to his transformation from a brat to a genius scientist? Well, when Mojo from the future uses a time machine to travel back in time to make sure the professor isn't inspired to create the girls, the girls also go back in time to rescue him. Mojo takes Utonium to a volcano top to cook him up, but the girls arrive just in time and save him. A half-conscious and young Utonium sees the girls flying and thinks that they are the perfect little girls, which ultimately inspires him to turn to science. Little did he know those perfect little girls were the ones he would create in the future. Now, let's get to the show. The show takes place in the city of Townsville, where we have the mayor and his hot secretary, Sarah Bellum. The Powerpuff Girls are the well-known saviors of the city, and you often see the mayor speed dial the girls whenever there is a new villain in town. The girls are often at their school when trouble arises, where they are taught by adorable Miss Keen. Fun fact, Miss Keen and Miss Bellum attended the same class as Professor Utonium when they were kids. Now to the first episode of the show, one peaceful Townsville night, a sneaky thief swipes a dog-headed bust and some pricey rubies from the local museum. The next day, the Powerpuff Girls dive into the case, figuring out that the anubile jewels are missing. Up on a snoozing volcano, guess who we find? Mojo Jojo, that sharp-dressed chimp mixing the stolen anubis dog head with those jewels for his big bad plan. Soon enough, the girls rescue a yapping dog stuck in a car and boom, they stumble upon a city where every dog can chat. Townsville Hall isn't spared either. The mayor, Miss Bellum, and even Professor Utonium have all gone woof. 
They can't talk much, but they point to Mojo Jojo as the guy behind this fury mess. So with Mojo's Mojo, they become power pups, and there's a showdown. But it's Buttercup's brainwave that smashes the dog-headed bust on Mojo's noggin, turning the world back to normal, except for Mojo Jojo, who's now a furball himself. After the girls catch the professor glancing sadly at the empty side of his bed, they decide to play matchmaker and set him up on a date with I'm a good lady, whom they met at the supermarket. The date goes well, but when the girls bring Ima home, her true colors emerge as she bosses them around and imposes strict rules. She even frames the girls for sneaking out after curfew to respond to the Powerpuff hotline. Suspicious of Ima, the girls unmask her as Sedusa, who had robbed the mayor's priceless jewels earlier. A fight ensues and the professor calls the police. In the end, the professor apologizes to the girls for doubting them and the kind neighbor brings him a pie to congratulate them for catching Sedusa. Oh, there's definitely something in there. One day, the Powerpuff Girls are in the middle of dealing with this pretty scary three-headed monster causing a lot of trouble. While they are trying to stop it, Blossom and Buttercup start butting heads over how to handle the situation. Poor Bubbles gets stuck in the middle and she's not handling it too well. What they don't know is that the sneaky him is watching all this, planning to mess with Bubbles. Back at home, Blossom and Buttercup's argument keeps heating up and meanwhile Bubbles falls right into him's trap. He disguises himself as her favorite stuffed octopus, Octi, and starts whispering some not-so-nice stuff in her ear. This makes Bubbles start questioning whether Blossom should really be in charge. Things get even crazier during a big showdown with a massive monster and their fight puts Townswell in real danger. It's only when their dad, Professor Utonium, steps in that they snap out of it. But by then, Bubbles is heartbroken and under him spell, and she ends up facing off with the creepy villain all alone. Her cries for help finally bring the sisters back together, and they manage to beat him. So there's this mischievous gang in Townsville, the Gang Green Gang, and they're all about causing trouble and bullying kids until our Powerpuff Girls swoop in. Ace, the slick leader, pulls a fast one on Buttercup by pretending to be innocent, making her feel sorry for them. The next day, they crash a museum field trip and things get wild with a brawl. Ace takes Buttercup aside and convinces her that they just wanted a soda and her sisters were being too tough. Buttercup, feeling sympathetic, sneaks the gang under a carpet to keep them safe from her sister's wrath. As a thank you, she offers Ace a soda and he is all like, hey, you can hang with us anytime. You can hang out with us anytime. So Buttercup starts secretly visiting their hideout. But, surprise surprise, Ace is using her as a pawn in their plan to control Townswell. That night, Buttercup shows up as promised but finds herself alone with Ace. Meanwhile, the rest of the gang traps Blossom and Bubbles in these crushed car cubes and nearly drops them in boiling liquid. When Buttercup finds out, she goes into full-on superhero mode, saving her sisters and letting her anger loose on Ace and the gang. In the end, she comes clean to her sisters and gives them a big heartfelt hug. Mojo Jojo, tired of his constant defeats by the Powerpuff Girls, has a total breakdown in prison and decides to create some male counterparts to finally take them down. He gathers ingredients like snips, nails, and a puppy dog's tail, and throws in some chemical X from his prison cell's toilet. The result? The rowdy rough boys, Brick, Boomer, and Butch. He breaks out of jail with them and challenges the Powerpuff Girls to a showdown. At first, the rowdy rough boys seem to have the upper hand. They are ruthless and don't care about playing fair or keeping the city safe. They toss around ships and buses and even sabotage aircraft in their fight. But then the Powerpuff Girls realize something important. These guys aren't just strong, they are also totally heartless. So they change their tactics. Instead of using punches and kicks, they use their charm. They start flirting with the rowdy rough boys and plant kisses on their cheeks. This, surprisingly, is too much for the boys to handle. They're so disgusted that they literally explode into pieces. It's a win for the girls. Afterward, the girls chat about the whole kissing thing, with Buttercup not really on board with the idea. And that's how this crazy battle ended. During a family outing at Bonsai Gardens Park, the Powerpuff Girls encounter a giant fish balloon monster, prompting the professor to build the Powerpuff Dynamo. A giant robot meant to protect them in emergencies. Reluctantly, the girls agree to use it under specific conditions, but after a week of battling monsters and fighting crime, the Dynamo is almost out of commission. When the same fish monster returns and threatens Townswell, the professor insists that they use the Dynamo, leading to a battle that causes significant collateral damage. The mayor and citizens chastise the girls for using the robot, and they blame the professor for making them do it, causing him to flee on his helicopter. The episode closes with the realization that the professor's genius doesn't necessarily translate to common sense.
In Townsville, a new kid named Princess Morbucks arrives in a fancy limo, sporting a snooty attitude, especially towards the class hamster, Twiggy. The Powerpuff Girls introduce themselves as superheroes, but decline to let Princess join them due to her lack of powers. However, they reconsider the idea of friendship until the princess's wealthy father bribes her with money. The next day, Princess arrives at school dressed as a Powerpuff Girl and attempts to assist during a bank robbery, but only makes things worse. The girls scold her for her inexperience, leading her to run to her father, who equips her with a special suit. Returning in golden armor, she challenges the Powerpuff Girls, initially gaining the upper hand, but ultimately losing to Blossom's strategic maneuvers. Princess ends up in jail, realizing that being a Powerpuff Girl isn't about wealth or power, but protecting the vulnerable. Mojo Jojo stirs chaos in Townswell from his flying ship, leading the Powerpuff Girls into action. However, a falling eye beam knocks Bubbles unconscious during the brawl. When she wakes up at home, something weird has happened. She's taken on Mojo's persona temporarily and even ditched her signature headbands. Meanwhile, Mojo discovers his clothes are gone and suddenly Bubbles, dressed as him, launches an attack. Blossom and Buttercup search for Bubbles but come up empty-handed. The mayor tips them off about Mojo's destruction with his Robo Jojo and during the battle, they find Bubbles inside it, imitating Mojo in unleashing devastating attacks on her sisters. It's chaos until Mojo loses patience, hits Bubbles with a construction bar and she snaps back to her true self, horrified by her actions. She realizes that only Mojo could have caused such destruction and ultimately defeats him, putting an end to the madness. As Father's Day approaches, the Powerpuff Girls strive to make their beloved professor happy. They recall past gifts they've given him, but what he truly desires is a set of rare Pro Excellence 2000 series golf clubs, priced at $2000 and limited to 12 sets worldwide. Unable to afford them through various fundraising schemes, Blossom seizes an opportunity during an emergency call to Townsville involving Mojo Jojo, coercing him to be arrested. Following their successful mission, the girls demand payment from the mayor, initially requesting $2000. They're tasked with cleaning up Mojo's mess, and Blossom notices a broken window at the golf club store, where she surreptitiously takes the coveted golf set. She presents it to the professor, who is arrested when the clubs are reported missing. In a desperate attempt to clear her name, Blossom tries to blame Mojo Jojo, but her sisters force her to confess to the death. She admits to the crime, motivated by her desire to make the professor happy. The professor, realizing the error of putting material possessions above his love for the girls, forgives Blossom, who was sentenced to 200 hours of community service for her actions. The Powerpuff Girls are absolutely thrilled as they excitedly plan their weekend getaway to the Bahamas, eager to escape their superhero duties and the constant hotline. They race back home, unknowingly crossing a time barrier at the speed of light. Upon their return, they find an aged and slightly senile professor who believes they're mere hallucinations. Townsville has transformed into a desolate wasteland, with Miss Bellum mourning the mayor's death and Miss Keene stuck in a strange repetitive daze. And, of course, him makes his grand entrance, revealing his role in this dystopian future. The girls engage in a fierce battle with him and emerge victorious, but he then transforms into a colossal monster, blaming them for their friends' predicaments. A group of aged and heartbroken children confront the girls, convinced that they abandoned them. Overwhelmed by guilt and distress, the girls make a swift escape into space, eventually returning to their timeline. Relieved to find Townsville intact, they decide not to leave, realizing the importance of their duties. They embrace the professor and explain their harrowing experience, choosing to remain vigilant protectors of their city. Weirdly enough, Miss Bellum, true and loyal to her job, seduces the mayor to take some time off in the afternoon. The mayor agrees, but at night, Bellum rushes back to the office to warn the girls about a crime. When the girls arrive, they find no evidence or clues, leaving them confused. The same thing happens for the next few days, until one day, Miss Bellum doesn't show up at the office. The mayor receives a ransom note from his fax machine, demanding a large sum of money to release his secretary. When the girls rush into Miss Bellum's house, they find out that she has tied Sedusa to a chair. However, they quickly learn that Sedusa has used disguises to switch places with Bellum. Sedusa uses her sticky hair gel to trap the girls, but Miss Bellum frees herself from the binds and attacks her. Their fight is taken to the pool outside, where Sedusa's hair gel is washed away, leaving her powerless. After Miss Bellum frees the girls, she uses a pair of scissors to cut Sedusa's hair. Miss Bellum returns to the office safe and sound, and the mayor is seen visiting Sedusa after visiting hours. The professor's experiment goes awry, causing everyone in Townsville to switch bodies. Buttercup ends up in the professor's body, Blossom swaps with Miss Bellum, and Bubbles switches with the mayor. 
chaos ensues as they navigate their new bodies and try to figure out who's behind a series of robberies happening in the midst of the body swapping confusion. The girls encounter various Townswell citizens and unexpected bodies, receive misleading information, and even suspect Mojo Jojo's involvement. Eventually, they realize Mojo Jojo has switched bodies with an old lady to carry out his plans. While the girls battle him, the professor, Miss Bellum, and the mayor work to reverse the body swapping effect. As the day is saved and everyone's bodies return to normal, a playful twist occurs as Bubbles and the narrator appear to have switched bodies, ending the episode on a humorous note. The Powerpuff Girls and the Professor eagerly anticipate a day off together, but their plans are repeatedly disrupted by emergencies in Townsville, forcing the girls into action and leaving the Professor feeling left out. To join them in their heroics, the Professor takes on the persona of a superhero Power Prof which they initially welcome as they battle various threats together, but his overprotective and embarrassing behavior begins to frustrate them. During a showdown with Mojo Jojo, the girls are captured, leaving the professor to face the villain alone. Despite initial struggles, the professor defeats Mojo and saves the day, realizing the challenges the girls endure as heroes. As a result, he decides to retire his power prof persona, acknowledging the girls' capabilities as Townswell's heroes. In the end, they thank Mojo for helping them teach the professor a lesson, and they return to their superhero duties as a united team. During Valentine's Day at Pokey Oaks Kindergarten, the Powerpuff Girls exchange cards with their classmates. Blossom, Bubbles, and Buttercup inquire about their teacher Miss Keen's romantic plans, but she claims not to have time for dating. At home, the girls watch a romantic movie with their father, Professor Utonium, and discuss their single status. Inspired, the girls secretly set up Professor Utonium and Miss Keen on a date, hoping they'll become a couple. However, their attempts lead to comic situations, like arranging a romantic dinner at a family fun center. Despite misunderstandings and distractions, a moment of connection occurs between Miss Keen and the professor. They get too absorbed in their new relationship, neglecting their duties and even hijacking the Powerpuff hotline. This causes them to miss an emergency call and almost leads to disaster. Eventually, the professor's fear of cats leads to a misunderstanding in their breakup, realizing their neglect of responsibilities. The day is saved when the girls acknowledge their own role in the situation and intervene, leading to Miss Keen and the professor realizing their mistake. On a night filled with nightmares, the Powerpuff Girls find themselves in a dream world crafted by him, the evil villain. In this eerie dream, Blossom faces a terrifying school scenario where she receives failing grades while Buttercup battles enormous spiders and Bubbles is tormented by creepy stuffed animals. They confront their fears, support each other, and ultimately defy Him's attempts to scare them. As they unite against Him's monstrous form, the girls reinforce the importance of their sisterhood, emphasizing that as long as they have each other, fear cannot defeat them. The nightmare ends, and they awaken to find their worried professor on their bed, assuring him that they will protect him. The day is saved once again thanks to the Powerpuff Girls' courage and unity. Him, the menacing villain, fumes with frustration as he watches videos of the Powerpuff Girls defeating various adversaries. His anger turns to intrigue as he stumbles upon a promising revelation. The following day, after the girls have successfully dispatched some monsters, an unexpected challenge emerges. The rowdy rough boys resurface, standing tall on a massive outcropping that emerges from the ground. Though taken aback by their return, the girls can't resist mocking the boys' unconventional new hairstyles. They engage in intense battles, initially clashing individually with their male counterparts and then as a united force. In the heat of the battle, Blossom recalls a past strategy, attempting to defeat the boys through affectionate kisses. However, to their dismay, this time, the boys seem to thrive on their affection, growing larger and more formidable with each kiss. Him makes a dramatic entrance, revealing that he vaccinated the boys against cooties, rendering them immune to the girls' kisses. However, Buttercup notices that embarrassing the boys can cause them to shrink. The girls proceed to humiliate the boys in various ways, causing them to shrink until they are smaller than the buckles on the girls' shoes. Him reappears, scolds the boys for their failure, and makes them disappear. He warns the girls that the boys will return and vanish, leaving the Powerpuff Girls victorious for now, but uncertain about the future. The Powerpuff Girls find themselves overwhelmed by a coalition of Townswell's most notorious villains, including Mojo Jojo, Princess Morbucks, Fuzzy Lumpkins, and Gang Green Gang, Sedusa, Him, and the Amoeba Boys. Exhausted and defeated, they yearn for a world filled with peace and love. A gnome emerges from a mystical rose, offering to rid Townswell of evil in exchange for their superpowers. After some hesitation, they agree, and the gnome's spell vanquishes the villains. 
Townswell becomes a seemingly idyllic utopia, with the townspeople worshipping the gnome. However, the professor warns them of the price, the loss of free will. When the gnome turns evil, the girls regain their powers and confront him. After a fierce battle, they defeat the gnome who realizes he's become the very evil he sought to eliminate. Townsville returns to its previous state, with the girls teaching the lesson that both good and evil are essential, and true peace and understanding must be nurtured rather than forced. A troublesome fortune teller named Madame Argentina and her goose sidekick Fred create chaos in Townsville by stealing the key to the city from the mayor. The Powerpuff Girls, Blossom, Bubbles, and Buttercup confront them, leading to a chase that ends on a remote island. There, Argentina buys voodoo dolls resembling the girls, suspending them over a cliff. Later, the voodoo dolls are stolen and auctioned on eBay, freeing the girls, but also revealing the voodoo dolls' connection to their real counterparts. Back home, the girls pretend to cook the voodoo doll version of Fred, attracting Argentina and Fred, who crash their plane trying to rescue the doll. This sends them flying into a grill where they are charred and subsequently sent to jail, allowing the girls to return the stolen key to the mayor and save the day once more, thanks to the Powerpuff Grill. And in the final episode of the show, in Professor Utonium's party preparations, Buttercup dreads having to wear a party dress, while Bubbles dreams of being the prettiest girl at the party. However, her elation turns into shock when she finds Octi's mutilated leg under her bed, leading to her fainting. Bubbles is determined to find the culprit and avenge Octi. At the party, Bubbles becomes suspicious of her sisters and even Miss Keen and the mayor, recalling past incidents with Octi. She locks everyone in the room and interrogates them, but the phone rings, revealing Mojo Jojo as the culprit. He demands 1,000 gallons of Chemical X for Octi's safety. When the professor confesses to accidentally vacuuming Octi, the girls fix him and the party continues. But the call from Mojo Jojo takes an unexpected turn, leading to a humorous ending with Mojo Jojo feeling ill after eating contaminated banana cream pie, leaving Bubbles to call him a party pooper. So, this was the entirety of Powerpuff Girls from beginning to end in detail. Now, what a show with mainly silly adventures, but some deep, thought-provoking moments as well. But what do you think? Was it among your favorites when you were little? Let us know in the comments, and as for everything else, if you enjoyed it, drop us a like, and subscribe to Cartoon Mania for more awesome tunes like this recapped on your feet. With that said, thanks for watching. Peace!